John Cena versus The Rock. A match that can only happen once in a lifetime. Twice. You're watching So Off. This is Freddy Krueger saying hi. Hey everybody, welcome back to WrestleMania Wednesday. I'm your host Don, and today we're going to be talking about WrestleMania 29, which was uh, on April 7th, 2013, at the MetLife Stadium in Rutherford, New Jersey. This was a pretty good WrestleMania. There was at least one amazing match, a couple of really, really good matches, but and the rest were just kind of okay. I don't think there were any really bad matches. It opens with a bang. We've got the WrestleMania debut of The Shield. I love The Shield. They're my favorite wrestling faction of all time. Maybe. So we've got the WrestleMania debuts of Roman Reigns, Seth Frickin' Rollins, wearing the shirt, and Dean Ambrose. Going up against Sheamus, Randy Orton, and The Big Show. Weird matchup. A lot of diverse wrestling styles in the ring, but it was great fun. I don't think The Shield have ever had a match that wasn't great. They're consistently fun. They're just three of my all-time favorite wrestlers. And they always just go all out and they're great fun. A, a, a phenomenal way to, to start the show. To start the show with a bang. With this just brawl of these six awesome wrestlers. This one was really good. The Shield, of course, won. Because they're the Shield. They beat everybody. They always win. They're great. Next up, we switch gears. We take things down a notch a little bit. We have Mark Henry versus Ryback making his WrestleMania debut. I like both of these guys. I'm not criticizing them. I'm just saying the Shields go all out. These two are big strong men having a, a typical big strong man match. I like Ryback. I like everybody except for Triple H I guess on this show. I always seem to defend the wrestlers that everybody hate. For some reason there was a big backlash against Ryback, but I, I always enjoyed his matches. He's, again, his moveset is limited, but for a big guy, I think he's pretty talented, and I always enjoyed his matches. In, in interviews, he always seems like a really cool, nice guy. Um, this match was okay. It was fun. It wasn't amazing. After you're done watching WrestleMania 29, you won't remember it, but for what it was, it was entertaining, and I, they both put on a pretty decent show. Mark Henry, the strongest man in the world still, gets the win. Good for him. Next up is another tag team match. We've got, it's for the tag team titles. It's champions Team Hell No, which is Daniel Bryan and Kane. Going up against Big E Langston in his WrestleMania debut. And Dolph Ziggler. That's a weird team. I didn't know they were a team. Um, pretty good match. I like all of these guys. Really good match, even. Team Hell No has always, always seemed like a weird team to me. Uh, just really uh, strange pairing of Demon Kane and Daniel Bryan. But it worked. They're both really good wrestlers, and it was fun. Um, and they won and retained their titles. This one was pretty good. This was a pretty good match. I liked it. So this is the 29th WrestleMania Wednesday that I've done. And I never expected to see Fandango <laughs> at WrestleMania. I didn't know he appeared on WrestleMania. He is a, a guy, his gimmick is, I think, something to do with he conquered the world of ballroom dancing, so he wanted to conquer the world of wrestling. That's a great gimmick. That's funny. And uh, I love Fandango. I think he's a, he's a underrated wrestler. He's always funny. Is gets neglected and kicked around by the company, and he, he's never really got a big push, and they, they've never really gotten too many wins. But I think he's funny, and so I was really excited to see him make an appearance at WrestleMania. And this is his WrestleMania debut. It's maybe his only WrestleMania appearance. I don't know. We'll find out as we keep going. I hope he's I hope he's in the next few that I get to watch because he's great. And this is him against Chris Jericho. And this was a pretty great little match. Nobody will ever talk about this one. This is not going to make any best of lists. But I thought it was really good. The, the, the premise of the fight was 
Fandango was mad at Chris Jericho because Chris Jericho kept mispronouncing his name and making fun of his name. That's the premise. That's all you need sometimes. It's stupid, but it was fun. And Fandango is, is a, a shockingly good wrestler. He's underrated, in my opinion. Check out this match. It was really fun. Fandango wins. Who knew? I did not expect that. I did not. He wins over Chris Jericho. So, so props to Fandango for putting in an a, a awesome performance and a really fun match. And props to Jericho for um, doing the honors and letting Fandango win. Good for him. You know, not to go off on a tangent here, but Fandango is kind of a throwback character. Like when I was a kid, everybody was a gimmick. Which is to say, they were some kind of weird character. You know, you had your evil Mountie. You had your IRS agent. You had an evil clown. You had an evil trash man. He's an evil ballroom dancer. So, but nowadays, like since like the Attitude Era and the, you know the late '90s, early 2000s, gimmicks have gone away. But I think in order to have a really good wrestling card, you need to have a couple of gimmick guys just to mix things up and for fun. So you got to have a couple guys like Fandango on the on the card, just because they're fun and they keep things interesting. I love Seth Rollins, I love Chris Jericho, but you need, you need that ballroom dancer character. Next up is for the heavyweight championship. It's champion Alberto Del Rio defending against Jack Swagger. Quality match. Both really good wrestlers. Um, Alberto Del Rio is, a, a, I think, a better, but I think Jack Swagger is a pretty solid wrestler. He's a, he's a very talented young man. I don't know how old he is. Maybe he's older than me. Not much to say about it. It was just a, it was a good, solid wrestling match. Alberto Del Rio won. He kept his title. Next up is the match of the night, in my opinion. It's CM Punk versus The Undertaker. The story here was something to do with Paul Bearer, the Undertaker's longtime manager, died in real life and in the show. So CM Punk stole the urn that his ashes were in and was taunting the Undertaker with it and so just being a real jerk, <laughs> you know, throwing his urn up in the air and playing with it. So the Undertaker was fighting him to get the urn back. A really silly premise which usually leads to a really good match and this was the best match of Wrestlemania. The best match in a few years. Well, I put this on my top 10 Wrestlemania Wednesday matches. It was just so much fun and just so exciting and just, uh, it was a click. This was, this is what professional wrestling should be. It's never really mentioned in the same conversation as, you know, Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, one or two. And I think it doesn't have the same epic grandeur to it. It's not like a retirement match and it's not two guys who have been wrestling you know, for 20 years in the same um, company and who became the two top guys and were having it out. But, boy, on a pure technical wrestling level, unbeatable. One of the best matches you'll ever see. Just so much fun. So nail-biting. You can really believe the Undertaker streak might actually come to an end here. But it doesn't. And the Undertaker wins. And he's now 21 wins zero losses. Pretty amazing. Anyway, I can't recommend this match highly enough. It's just so much fun. And unfortunately, this is the last time we will see CM Punk on WrestleMania Wednesday because this is his last WrestleMania match. He ends up leaving the company before the next WrestleMania, but at least he got to go out on a high note. It's not the main event. He always wanted to be in the main event, but this uh, this match, this is the real main event for me. You could watch this match and then just turn it off because it's downhill from here. Then we've got Brock Lesnar versus Triple H. Yeah, this was boring. So, uh, what, what is there to say about this one? We've two guys who just traditionally go out there and squash their opponents. But of course, nobody squashes their opponents quite like Triple H. Um, so if Triple H wins against Brock Lesnar, you can believe that. And I actually, I like Brock Lesnar. 
sometimes. If he's up against an opponent, like CM Punk has an amazing match against uh, Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. I don't remember what year. Um, I like Brock Lesnar against um, The Undertaker. He had his, his, his feud with The Undertaker. Those are always fun. But just Triple H and Brock Lesnar, they're just both just kind of boring and repetitive. And this match... This match just didn't do it for me. <laughs> and I think if Brock Lesnar had won, I would have enjoyed it more. But it just, it felt f really fake to me. And it was just so slow-paced and boring and repetitive. I don't know. I don't have much to say about this one. Oh yeah, Shawn Michaels was at ringside for some reason. He did nothing. But I guess it's always nice to see Shawn Michaels. Alright, let's check out the Hall of Fame class of 2013. We've got Mick Foley, Booker T., Trish Stratus, who still looks amazing, Bob Backlund, Donald Trump, and Bruno San Martino. One of those people is not like the other, and I don't mean Booker T because he's black. <laughs> what can you say? What can you say? A lot of these guys, obviously, Mick Foley, nobody deserves to be in the Hall of Fame more than Mick Foley. Booker T, great wrestler. Trish Stratus, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, female wrestlers of all time. Bob Backlund, Bruno San Martino, longest reigning uh, wrestling champ in history, right? And then there's Donald Trump. And the only cool thing about having Donald Trump as our president is we can say we have uh, our president is in the WWE Hall of Fame. But maybe that's also kind of embarrassing. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about Donald Trump anymore. It's funny, I started doing WrestleMania Wednesday when he was uh, still kind of a joke. And then he started to like actually have a chance to win, and then he kind of he then he won, and now he's a joke again. Although it's not a joke because he is horrible. But enough about Donald Trump. I don't want to talk about it because they all start to cry. And then finally, our main event is our second once in a lifetime event for the WWE Championship. It's The Rock, who somehow became champion again. Uh, versus John Cena, who is somehow supposed to be the underdog, even though he's the most famous wrestler in the company at this point. So I don't know. I could see how the first time they fought, because it was Icon versus Icon, The Rock came back after like so many years to fight the new face of the company. So it was fresh and exciting. People thought, oh, once in a lifetime, this could never happen. I never thought I'd see this. But to do it again, because <laughs> yeah, the first match wasn't that great, but it had that gimmick and it had that appeal and that like, wow, this is just, oh, they're doing it again, twice in a lifetime. And it's just not very good. It's not terrible. It's still kind of fun in places. I mean, John Cena and The Rock are incredibly charismatic. In the history of wrestling, maybe there's nobody as charismatic as these two. Bold words, I know, but eh, meh, I didn't really care. John Cena wins and becomes the champion for like the tenth time, but they act like he's never. Oh my God, this is amazing! Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm glad Cena won, but I don't care. But other than that, I would cons if you consider Undertaker, CM Punk the main event, and then you can just turn it off. This is a very, very solid, very, very good WrestleMania. I did like it. When I, I did the recap, like I did the intro, and I kind of underplayed it, but as I was reading these matches, I think I didn't give it enough credit, because this is a pretty good to great WrestleMania in, in retrospect. It's just the two main events kind of fell flat. and. That's kind of, after you watch it, that's kind of all you're thinking about. Like, oh, that was, that kind of went on an hour too long. Uh, the CM Punk Undertaker was awesome. Fandango, Jericho, really fun match. And, you know, some of the others were good fun. You get to see our president on stage with Trish Stratus, Bruno San Martino, and Mick Foley. I guess that's exciting. Uh, yeah, comment down below with your thoughts. What's your favorite match? I know Gandhi defended the first Cena Rock match. Do you still like this one? 
if you can't trust Gandhi, who can you trust? Anyway, uh, yeah, that's that, and I will see you next Wednesday. And he got really famous because he had his song, which became, I believe, the number one downloaded song on the iTunes Music Store for a little bit. And then they retooled him, and they got rid of the song, and then nobody liked uh, Fandango anymore. <laughs> and then they brought back a song, but by then it was too late. Anyway, I don't want to make this the Fandango show, but I like the guy. He seems cool. Uh, and maybe he is my favorite.